There's been a lot of confusion around this Shen crash about how drunk the driver was and why we're not being made aware of the blood alcohol content. We're joined by Chaz Farcher of Martin Harding and Mazzotti. Good morning, Chaz. Good morning, Kelly. Good morning, Chuck. Hey, Chaz. So we're talking about a, a, a blood test versus a breathalyzer, and I understand that Dennis Drew, who was the driver of the car uh, that struck these four kids, uh, he was given a sobriety test in the field, but it's not admissible, and so we're waiting on toxicology. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, first of all, you're, I, I just want to say my heart breaks for the, the friends and family of, of these kids. Uh, you, you know, as a father myself, you yep. should never have to bury your children. And it's it's just such a, a sad, tragic case. And, you know, what, what an awful scenario. It's a re- it's because of cases just like this, the reason that this firm, Martin Harding and Mazzotti, is so committed to the Safe Ride Home program in the Capital District during the holidays. Uh, yep. it, it disconnected the County Stock EWI program, and we now work in conjunction with the Netters Fund and the Capital District Safe Ride program in Rensselaer County. If you could prevent even one of these cases, uh, it would have made a difference. But, you got uh, that right. You know, as far as the legal issues go, you, you know, yes, they, they give this field to Bride tests, uh, and they really are to help develop probable cause to make an arrest to make that judgment in the field. Uh, you know, if a driver's intoxicated or not, but really what the driver's obligated to, to comply with or to submit to is a chemical test, and that can be breath, blood, urine, or, or saliva. It's really up to the officer's uh, discretion as to which tests and the circumstances usually dictate. Most common, and what most drivers are probably familiar with, is the, the, the breath test down at the police station. That's usually just because it's the easiest one that's calibrated. It's in the police station, and it's the one that the officers can give themselves. So that's that's the most common test, but it's not the only option for the police. So the one that's given in the field, that's not admissible in court? Does it have to be administered in the police station? That's correct. The reason is the one that's given in the field is not a calibrated test. You know, they're not uh, they're not given by certified operators, and they're not calibrated tests. They're really just a, even the field test to give the officer a general idea as to what the driver's BAC is. But, the, you know, there's a large margin of error for those. So it's really just is there alcohol in the person's system or not, and that will give them a yes or no to determine if they need to make an arrest. And, then, you know, if that test comes back positive, then that gives them a good basis to take someone down to the station and give them the chemical test of the, the breathalyzer in the station, which is calibrated, and that one is admissible in court. Speaking with Chas Farcher from Martin Harding and Mazzotti, do, they, do, do the police treat a blood versus breath differently depending on the seriousness of the accident? Well, you know, I mean, like I said, either one is admissible in court. The, the problem with the, the blood test is that generally it takes longer to get certainly takes longer to get the results, and usually the police, uh, you know, they're not going to be the ones drawing blood or taking blood. That, that's got to be done by a health professional. So usually you'll see that in a case where the defendant driver is injured uh, badly enough to have to go to the hospital. The hospital generally, as a matter of protocol, will take blood, uh, and if they do that, then the police will usually seek to get that either through a search warrant or through the driver's consent. They'll try and get some of that blood as well, have it tested by their home laboratory to determine the amount of alcohol in the blood at the time. Now, is there a concern over the lag time between the accident and getting the person to the hospital and getting the blood drawn in a reasonable period of time so it's, it's reflective of the actual blood alcohol content at the time of the crash? Well, of course. You know, I mean, if you're a district attorney or a prosecutor, your concerns are twofold. One, uh, you're supposed to have those chemical tests completed within two hours of arrest. So, you know, if you, if you have someone who's not seriously injured, if, uh, if you have a defendant driver who's been arrested, you're supposed to get them down to the station and test their breath within two hours, get their blood taken within two hours, whatever test you're going to do, uh, get that done within two hours if you can. Now, uh, normally, the uh, norm, a, a lot of times the cops, uh, very, you know, uh, shortly after an accident, will release the blood alcohol level. They didn't in this case. Is that purely up to their discretion or the DA? Or who decides whether you can make that public? Yeah, you know, that, that's 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 a police call, and my guess is because you have such a high-profile case, and you've got some, you've obviously you've got the death of two young kids here. It's a, it's a case that the community's watching. Uh, it's probably one they're still working on in the end. It's an ongoing investigation, so they're probably just making sure they cross all their T's and dot all their I's before they make the information public. I, it's not a cause for concern for, for me right now, anyway. Mm. WGY legal analyst Chaz Farcher of Martin Harding and Mazzotti, 1-800-LAW-1010. Chaz, thank you so much. Thanks a lot, uh, Kelly. Thanks, Chuck. And again, my thoughts and prayers with the friends and families of these poor kids. You got it. Thanks, Chaz.